let us continue with our lesson and uh, today we are going to learn about the Kotlin coatings and the scope of the Kotlin coating as well as the suspending function in Kotlin coating. So let's go and get started and uh, don't worry if you don't see some of these the package and the files or the layouts over here because I am coming back from the uh, the other video so the user had basically requested to me to create uh, another video and to explain more about the Kotlin coating. So I have created this video because this video has been replaced so that the files and the, the package structure may be a bit different than uh, your one because I'm coming back from uh, my other lecture. So I have already completed most of the lecture and I'm coming back to explain it one more time. So for that, um, let's get started with the Kotlin coating. And uh, first of all, we will understand the suspending function. So there is a keyword over here when we create a function that is a suspend. The suspend basically comes from the uh, Kotlin coating. And uh, when we create a suspending function or a suspend function, this suspend function can only be called from another suspend function or from the Kotlin coating scope. So we cannot call it from the normal function like here in the on create is a normal function and when we are calling this particular on create then we get in some error that says that we cannot call this uh, suspend function from the normal function we need to call this function suspend function from the another suspend function or from the coating scope and uh, so for that what we will do is we need to create a coating scope so let's create our Coatin scope. So just get the coating scope. And uh, this coating scope, we need to pass the context. The context basically, we can pass the dispatcher. You can see the Kotlin X dot coating is we pass the dispatcher dot. And you can see the dispatcher has the main IO default and the unconfined. And uh, the main basically means over here that is a main thread. So if you want to run something in the main thread or the main UI thread, so basically whenever you are accessing the UI, like your layout or displaying something, text or anything to you, your user, basically we, switch, we have to switch, the, switch to the main thread because only the main thread can access the UI. And if you want to do something in the background, then we, we have to switch to the IO thread or the default thread. So IO thread basically we do the input and output operation like the network call call to a network or to do some uh, database operation. So we make use of the IO dispatcher. And for the default, we basically make use for whenever we have uh, the CPU intensive tasks to like like sorting or array or whenever you are doing some C CPU intensive tasks, then we will make use of the default dispatcher. And for on confined, basically we we'll make use only on uh, the testing of our application. So we just have to take note on the main IO and the default. So we will be mostly using the IO thread because we have to connect to the network and to the database operation. So that at the time we will make use of the IO thread. So let us uh, create a dispatcher that I over here, and then I can launch the. I have to launch the coding scope. So launch is another the function or the the builder. So the launch is a builder over here. We can call it a coating scope builder and uh, we launch it. So this will create a coating scope for us or this will launch a coating scope for us. And now we have our first coating scope created. And now we can move this or call this the, the suspend function from the coating scope and we doesn't get any error over here. And um, this is how we create our first coating scope and call this suspend function. And this suspend function, whenever we call this suspend function from this coating scope, so let's say we have created a dispatcher that I over here, and which means that it will run in the background thread. And when we call this particular check network, it will be also called in a network uh, or the background thread. So basically, all of the tasks over here now is going to be done in the background. It will not access the main thread. And uh, so that's the thing that you have to take note that whenever we call the suspending function from any coating scope and whichever 
uh, whichever trade this uh, coaching scope has launched, uh, the main trade or the background trade. So the the call function or the suspend the call suspending function is also going to run in the same trade. So here it's going to run in a background trade. And uh, also it's always recommended that we make use of the main trade over here. But I'm just going to show you how to use the background trade over here. And over here, we come to the suspend function now. And in this suspend function, we are going to uh, delay, delay it by two seconds. So I have, a, we have a delay function over here, D-E-L-A-Y delay, sorry, D-E-L-A-Y delay. And this function is going to take a parameter on the time millisecond. So I can say uh, 2000 millisecond, uh, which basically means that uh, we are going to hold our trade for two seconds over here. So I can just say over here, that's a two seconds over here. So 2000 means a 2000 millisecond, basically means a two seconds. So delay means uh, it will delay your code execution or it will halt your current trade. So this is going to hold your thread means you are not going to go to the next execution of your code until and unless this two seconds is passed. So delay means that you are going to hold your thread. So it will hold your thread uh, for the two seconds. And then only it will going to call all of this function or the, the code that we have written below this delay. So this will delay the two seconds. And if you go and run your current application, we should see the splash screen for the two seconds. So if you go to this plus activity, we will see this for the two seconds. And uh, let's wait for the application to come up. And uh, I think we have some, I haven't connected the internet. So let me connect to the internet first. And uh, what I will do is I'll run the application one more time. And uh, let's see that we will see this for the two seconds because we have mentioned it over here that uh, to delay for the two seconds, then only move to the next uh, line of code education. Then I hope you guys got it. And now, and uh, basically it's, now you can see over here, we have our alert dialog. And this alert dialog is going to run in the main thread. We cannot call this alert dialog from the background thread. Since we have created this one in the background thread, and now this is going to run in a background thread too. So if you try to push it to the UI thread or the main thread, then your application is obviously going to crash. So if you go and run, run your application, let me try to off the internet first. Try trying to off the internet because uh, we are checking for the internet and if there is no internet connection, we are going to show this. So let's run this and uh, we will get the crash of the application after two seconds. And if you go to the log cat, and uh, if I, yeah, you can see there is a, if you go over here, it's, it cannot show because we are in the background thread. We are in the background thread over here. That that has not called from the loop order thread. So we are basically in the background thread and we cannot call to the main, main thread. The, that's why we need to, Put this one in the main thread. So how do we switch to the main thread? Main thread is quite easy. And uh, if you are, if you have done it in the traditional way, like switching to the uh, thread and uh, doing uh, messaging and looping. So previously we had to do all kind of this stuff, and uh, we need to write a lot of boiler codes. But with the Kotlin Kotlin, what we can do is we can do it uh, in a simple way. So we can just say uh, with, uh, with context over here. And you can see that we can create another code in scope. Right? It says that it can pass the another code in scope. So with context, and if I click control and click over here, it will take you to this particular function. And uh, this is a super class, uh, builder.com.kt. Builder and call this specified suspending block with a given code in context. Suspend until it completes and return the result. So which means that call calls this suspending suspending block within a given code in context. So we need to pass the Kotlin code in context over here too. So that should be of the dispatcher dot we will do a pass the main because we want to run in a main thread over here. And it takes the context over here. 
and it's a suspending function. And suspending function basically means it suspends until it complete. So basically suspend over here. Uh, let me try to run this one and create a code in scope with the with context builder. With context is another coroutine uh, scope builder. We can see with context and we pass the dispatcher that main, which means it's going to run in the main thread. And inside this, I'll part, cut and paste this, the other dialog over here. And since this is a main thread, now we can show our, we can show our other dialog over here. And uh, I hope you guys got it. The with context is uh, another Kotlin coroutine uh, builder over here, in which we have to pass the context on which uh, thread you are going to run this uh, particular uh, code in scope because this is also a code in scope. And whenever we are creating a code in scope, we have to pass the context on which thread you want to run. So we aren't running the main thread because currently we are running the background thread over here. And uh, the suspending function, this is a suspending function and suspending function means that it's going to, you can say that it suspends until all it, uh, it completes and return the value. So which means that it's going to go all of this code execute and then complete this suspending block. And uh, this suspending block, uh, suspending function that we have created also does the same. So it's going to execute all of this one by one and uh, it's going to run one by one and complete all of the, it's going to in the sequence and complete all of the tasks. And it's not doing the tasks in a asynchronous. Asynchronous means that it's calling this one and then it, it can go and it, instead of waiting, delaying for the two seconds, it can directly go and call all of this. So that's in the asynchronous way. Asynchronous way, it will go and do all of this, but the suspending function that we are saying is going to suspend, it's suspend until it's complete, which means that we are going to execute one by one on a sequence. Is it a synchronous in the synchronous way, not the asynchronous way. So I hope you guys got it and it may be a bit longer lecture over here and some of you guys have uh, asked me to uh, redo this lecture. So that's why I have created over here just to explain the code in scope and the dispatcher and the, the suspending function and also the with context that this is a code in context builder. And uh, if you guys have still problem with understanding it, I, uh, I recommend you to go and uh, they watch my another course on the Kotlin Kotlin for the Android developer. So I have another course on the Kotlin Kotlin uh, that we will be going on more deeper about the Kotlin Kotlin and you will learn from the basic and to the advanced level in that course. So this is just uh, to give you a brief overview that uh, how we should do all of the Kotlin Kotlin scopes and the suspending function. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you still have some question over here, do let me know. And I have uh, re-recorded this uh, lecture. That's why you may not uh, be, you will not see some of these, uh, like uh, the packages and the layouts. You may not see all of this in your in your uh, the base project. So that's all. And uh, we'll continue with our lecture on the next video. Till then, have a great day.